Good morning and thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to be making a bookmark. Um, I've seen them online and um, I really didn't find any use for them or any use for trying to make one. But um, I a book found me the other day at the thrift store and it practically jumped into my lap. So I um, bought it and I brought it home and I started reading it and I almost shoved the piece of paper in there to keep as a bookmark and then I remembered seeing them online and I remembered that I could probably figure that out and I did. So um, I'm not doing real fancy ones to start with, just small ones that um, you know are easy for me. But if you're a really good digitizer, you can probably take this idea and run with it. So what I do is I go in here and I click on um, the rectangle with the rounded edges. You can do the rectangle with the regular edges. That's fine. I seem to think it's a little bit softer. So last time I made my line really skinny and it was cute, but it was too skinny. So I want it to be a little bit fatter. Let's bring it down here in the middle of the canvas. Okay, so we'll click out of that and now I wanna go get my heart shape. And on the heart shape, you have to make sure that it's filled. If you don't fill it, okay, so your color one and color two, make sure your color two is different than color one. If you don't have it filled, you gotta do this like we did with the finger puppets and then go in and erase the stuff we don't want. Well, I realize that there's a much easier way to do that. So go up here to fill and make sure that it says fill with a solid color. But you keep your middle color white so it matches the middle color of this and your background. When you do that, it makes it where it covers up that part. And I like that. Okay. So you kind of want to make it a little skinny on the top, maybe not too wide. Just kind of balance it really nicely. Um, this is the part that's going to be sticking out. Okay, so we've done a million in the hoop projects. Not a million, but we've done quite a few in the hoop projects, but we don't do a lot that have a fill inside of it because I like to just hurry up and get through things. But I'm going to show you guys how to, I'm going to take this bird that I found online. It's probably not free so don't use this in anything you're trying to sell but um, I like this bird so I'm going to take him into paint sorry there and while we have this canvas still open we're going to hit paste and it's going to bring us our little birdie if we try to put the bird in now all the white edges of that picture are just going to cover up our little heart so we're going to move it over here we're going to zoom in on it And we're going to go around it with the, we don't need to zoom that much. Okay, so go up here to select, freeform selection, and start wherever is easiest for you. Get as close as you can to the black, but don't actually touch the black because that black is about probably 50 colors whereas our black is just one and if you've played with soar a little bit you understand what i mean by this bird being a million colors <laughs> it's not going to match your black and if it does it's going to really mess up everything so just try to go around it as best as you can as close as you can and don't zoom out i zoomed out and it undid it so we're just going to let it basically capture around it. That way when we go to put it in there, it doesn't cover the whole heart like it did before. Okay, but we need to make it a little bit smaller so it'll fit in nice. If we go up here, it's gonna cover up that and cover up all that. So we want it to go right in the middle. All right, so that's as simple as it is. We just create our image in paint and then um, hit rectangle selection go as close as you can to it without touching the black crop it and i always have to go twice okay crop it okay so that's just going to leave us with a simple image that we have for a bookmark 
Okay, so now file. Nope, we're not going to do that. Sorry. <laughs> select, select all, copy, and then we're going to open SoArt. And I did this whole video about an hour ago, and after waiting for everything to upload and everything like that, it for some reason wasn't recognizing it, so I had to do it all over again. And um, trying to remember everything that I put in the last video and trying to put stuff in this one that I forgot in the last video. So sometimes having to do the video twice isn't such a bad thing. <laughs> okay, so here we are in the SoArt demo. And we don't need to posturize, even though I'm sure we're going to have like a million colors. Don't use the wizard on these. Just don't. The wizard is is set. The wizard is mostly posturizing and image reduction. Posturize an image reduction tool all at once. So everything in the wizard, you have much more control over using. Um, doing everything manually. You have your merge colors, which I'm still learning about. But it seems really awesome so far what I've played with it, but I haven't played with it enough to actually tell you guys anything about it. I didn't remember or retain any of it, I guess is what I should say. Okay, so we don't need to worry about any of that stuff. We just need to reduce the colors and reduce the size. So let's reduce the size first and see if that changes anything. Okay, it doesn't. It kind of made it look a little uh, hard around the edges, but it would do that anyways. So it's still showing us that we can posturize. And when that, ha it, when the little head is showing colored in, it's saying that there's more than two colors, but we can tell that there's only two colors. So in here it's showing 39 colors. That bird probably has 38 of those colors. <laughs> okay. So we're just going to reduce it to two. So that's going to make it nice and crisp and even. Double check it. Make sure it says two. We don't have to do anything else to it. Now, if you have Sew Up Pro, you can take this um, file into Sew Up Pro and maybe add wording along this part because it's just this big empty space. It could be filled with so much cool stuff. Um, or you can, you know, use what's on your machine. And I'm not very good at placing stuff. When it's on my machine because you know even though it gives you the outline of where things should be it's still not perfect so um you know i've done it and i do it i'm just not the best at it but i got so at pro recently and it's so cool it's so awesome Alrighty, so but I'm I'm really into learning so art and everything that I can do with so art first i'm really only using so at pro to put letters on things because it's a thousand times faster than trying to do it file by file Okay, so we're here. Everything's good to go. We go over to our stitch image button, and we're going to want to go to applique center line. And we're going to click on this. Oops, every time. So there's your satin stitch, and it looks like a nice satin stitch. You have a height of 15. Here, I'll close that. Height of 15 and a length of four. And the length is actually the separation between those two. So if I was going to use 15, I would probably use a separation of two. I'm not going to use satin though. I'm using a bean. And beans are backwards. You get a height that's small and a length that's big. <laughs> so I like two and 25 for the bean stitch because it's big enough to look sort of homemade still, but small enough to keep everything nicely sewn together on in the hoop projects. So we, whenever we click on it, so let's go ahead and clear stitches, make sure it says bean, applique center line. The reason we're not using border is because it would only do the inside of that three times and then you'd have to click on that and it would do the inside of that three times. And we don't want that. We want it to do all one line. So I'm gonna click here and even though I click up here, the bean stitch is probably going to start here. What it looks like, what it does is it goes up, around, down, and in here. Can't remember. But um, you're mostly wanting to make sure that it's all nice and neat. You can tell that that's a heart. It doesn't skip over too much over there. And then we want to hit fill. We're going to click the fill button. I don't generally change anything on here. I'm sure you get some really beautiful results if you messed around a little bit, which I will eventually. Okay, so we have our fill stitch. 
and we have our applique. And now when we get to, to our machine, we're gonna file and save it and stuff like that. It's gonna bring up four steps. The first step is gonna be your die line and you, that's gonna be right onto your stabilizer. And then you wanna put your fabric over your die line and press step two. That's gonna be your tack down. It's gonna tack down this whole heart. And now it's gonna show you step number three is gonna be the final stitch, which will be your pretty bean stitch. And then step number four is the bird, but you don't want that to happen. You want to skip forward, and I'll show you the buttons on the SE425 how to skip forward. Um, you're going to want to skip forward to step four, do the bird, and then it's going to say finish sewing, and then you're going to skip forward again to step three. Um, and then before that, though, <laughs> after the bird stitches, you're going to take it off of your machine spray a little glue in the back and then put your backing on and then do your final stitch do stitch number three so stitch number three shows as step three but it's actually the final stitch and that will sandwich everything together and you won't see the back of the bird um in there and you won't see you know the tack down or the stabilizer it just cuts everything up nice and neat or not cuts but sews everything nice and easy so when you cut it out it's very pretty all right, I'm going to file, save as, cancel because I don't need an image of this, and I'm going to go right to the PC, and on my son's computer, it's removable disk F, and I already did the birdie bookmark. I've already done this whole thing, so that's basically what this is again, um, so I'm not going to redo it, but if you if you were... You just click on bookie book, birdie bookmark, make sure your pattern size is good, and then hit save. And that saves it right into your machine. Yes, I want to replace it. Okay. So, and something I noticed about this, I've never really done it, but if you pull it this way, it makes your stitch out bigger. I think I've tried that in the past and it didn't work. So it's working now, if that was something new. <laughs> but, um... Alrighty, so I took pictures and I'm going to make comments on those and I'll talk to you guys in a minute. Thanks, bye-bye. Okay, so go ahead and hoop your fabric, or I always say that, hoop your stabilizer. Um, and if you haven't watched any of my videos before, this is just the fabric, um, garden fabric that you would buy at Home Depot or Jerry, not Jerry's, you guys probably don't have that, <laughs> um, at Home Depot or um, Walmart, but I found it on Amazon. Well, I found it on Amazon, but I bought mine on Walmart. So, all right, so you're gonna get it to your machine and you're going to touch it once, make sure it turns dark, and then that little shirt pocket, I can't even explain what that image is supposed to be, but that's the arrow that says to upload it. All right, so whenever it uploads, you're going to get four, four sets of directions, four steps, sorry. So the first step is going to be your die line, and then your second is going to be the tack down, third is going to be your final stitch, and the fourth is the filling. So it's kind of confusing because three is the final stitch, but it's not really the final stitch. So here's the die line stitched out onto the fabric, onto the stabilizer. And um, you just want to, you don't have to do anything actually. It, all the settings are pre-made in um, Sew Art. So for the, tie, for the tack down and the die line. All right, so here's some fabric. This is the stuff that you would use. The black stuff is the stuff you would use for like um, backpacks. And then the other stuff is just some pretty oil cloth. I found them at our local upholstery shop in this box underneath everything as remnants for sale. And I got really big rolls and some really small cute rolls. And um, they were marked 25 cents, but by the time I got up to the top front, you know, I ended up only paying 10 cents for them. Um, so that was really, really, really cool. I've got lots of stuff to work with and play with now. So you put your fabric over the die line and then it's gonna set down your tack down stitch. So die line and then fabric and then tack down. And the tack down is just another running stitch. It's nothing fancy. But right now is where you're going to want to 
Don't do anything else. Don't go to step number three. This is step number two. When step number two is over and it's stitched out your tack down, you're going to want to go into your adjustment screen and um, you're going to want to skip forward to step number four where the bird is. Don't do step number three just yet at all. So, and I'll show you in a second how to get to those screens. So this is on mine, it shows it's adjustment. And once you go into the adjustments, um, you'll find a, one that looks like a needle and um, it's gonna give you like different options. And I'm sorry, this picture just takes forever. I just wanna have enough time to explain everything. So you'll have layout, check colors, and that was also in your previous screen was check colors, but you're going to have this, the layout is where you're going to be able to make it bigger, make it smaller, move it over, move it up and down. Um, but this one right here with the needle and the plus and minus, that's what's going to indicate to you um, moving forward and moving backward. If you click on the spool, the minus sign on the spool, it'll take you back a step. If you click on the plus sign on the spool, Spool, it takes you forward a step and the same goes for these except this is just a couple stitches back instead of a whole step back so um, you're going to want to skip forward the spool uh, with a plus sign you're going to skip forward to number four and then on top of your fabric go ahead and put some um, water soluble stabilizer it, I just always do that on anything that I have to do a fill stitch on it's, it just looks nice. So um, I use scraps from other projects because, you know, stuff like this is really small and you don't really need a whole piece to go over your whole thing. So I keep all of my scraps of almost everything unless it's really tiny, really tiny. And then it goes, hopefully I'm going to send it to my friend who works in a like a art place where they accept all kinds of stuff that people like scraps and things that people don't use. So here's the back after the bird and the die line and the tack down. And so we're gonna use a little bit of glue and we're just gonna spray really, really gently, um, you know, just very light coating. And a lot of people use a lot of different stuff. This is just the stuff I found at Hobby Lobby and it works really great. Um, a lot of people swear by 505, which I've never used. I've just seen that in other videos. <laughs> All right, so we spray the back just very lightly, and then we're gonna put our piece of oil cloth. It's a very thin strip. You're gonna, you know, have lots of fun with getting to choose lots of different colors because you're not using up a lot of different fabric. And you could probably use regular fabric, but you might wanna use a little bit more glue so that it stays on there. And then while you're letting that glue set, um, let's go back to the machine. It's gonna show you finished sewing after the bird sews out. So you're gonna say, okay. And then you're gonna go back in and the screen is gonna give you the adjustment screen is probably where you left off. That's where I left off. And when I hit okay, it's gonna just bring me back to where I was before. And I want to go back, or actually, because it's going to be finished sewing, I'm going to want to scoot forward three steps and finally do number three. This is going to be our pretty bean stitch. Um, it's the final stitch. It's also going to be the stitch that holds the backing to the front and covers all the stuff in the back. So there it is at the end. It started here, even though I clicked up here in the program, it started here and did this kind of around and down. You probably can't see my mouse, <laughs> but you can see where it started over here on the right side. And then it just kind of followed a line around and it ended up at the bottom on the left. All right, so there's the back. So I have to trim some stuff. Once I've cut everything off, I have to trim these willy nilly lines. But, um, you know, just cut a little bit on the outside. And because I was already using a black fabric, it's gonna be great using the black stabilizer because nothing's going to show. It's just going to show black and then the blue oil cloth. So I did use pink um, thread. <laughs> it's just showing out as white. But um, here's the bookmark. And there's the filling. It's all filled in really nice. You can sometimes see through stuff, but I've been noticing, you know, commercially made things and you guys really are doing wonderful, even whenever you think you're not. <laughs> so there's the backside, and, um, you know, it just shows you.
the pink on the back side and the pretty color design. And this is not the book that inspired me to make these, but this is one of my favorite books. I can't find the other book right now, of course. Go figure. But um, I am a staraholic. So here is um, what it looks like when the book is closed and, you know, your little heart sticking out on top or whatever you choose. You could probably just do a little square and put a bunch of stuff. And that's what it looks like pressed in on the side of the book all the way over to the left. And that's it, folks. I hope that that was really helpful. Um, I really, really, really love SoAR. It's been so fun and it's really neat to just have a need and just go ahead and do it. So um, in any case, I hope everything was really good for you guys and you understood everything. Let me know if I missed anything or if you have any more ideas for videos. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.